Imagine that you and I are at the pool and we have two swimming toys, a pool noodle and a diving torpedo. I take the torpedo, you take the noodle, and we have a contest to see which one can move farther through the water. Would you bet with me that your noodle would win? I'm guessing that you probably wouldn't and with good reason. All things being equal, the torpedo will always travel further than the noodle. This is in part because of a simple equation of physics, work equals force multiplied by distance. This equation is of key importance not just for noodle versus torpedo races, but also in how we swim and move in general. Here's the easiest way to think about it. How far I am able to swim forward during each stroke, or work, is dictated by how strongly I am able to push against the water with my arms and legs, force, multiplied by the length of my underwater stroking movement, distance. In the example of the noodle versus the torpedo, the biggest reason that the torpedo is able to do more work or move farther in the water is because its stable shape allows for a better center of pressure. This is a term in hydrodynamics that refers to how a force tends to act through a single point or plane on a body. The torpedo's rigid shape and tail fins stabilize its position in the water. This concentrates the force with which it was thrown along a much smaller area than the noodle, allowing it to hold a stable position in the water over a longer distance. This means that the forces acting on the torpedo are dissipated more slowly than the noodle, allowing it to move further. So here's the big question. How can we be more like a torpedo when we swim? The key to doing this is to manage the rotation of our body from side to side. While body rotation is a natural offshoot of the way we move our arms when we swim freestyle, it can also be managed so that when our hip rotates down, it stabilizes our body into a more rigid form. When this happens, the down-rotated edge of our body becomes our center of pressure. This causes the force that we generate as we stroke and kick to concentrate and act through that edge. If we hold this edge through our stroking movement, we can increase the distance or length of our stroke that we are able to generate force in the water. This translates to two simple goals when it comes to rotation. One, we need to hold our center of pressure along the edge of our body for as long as possible during our stroke. And two, we need to make sure that we rotate neither too little, causing poor center of pressure, or too much, causing us to sink. The best way to work on stabilizing and maintaining your rotated position during your stroke is to use one arm rotation drill. Start by floating in a horizontal position in the water with one of your arms held straight and tight to your side. Extend your other arm forward in front of your shoulder. Take a quick stroke and just as your arm re-enters the water, push your hip down. It's not necessary to move it too far, you should only feel like it moved an inch or two. As you do this, you should feel the edge of your body press down as your arm extends forward. Take your next stroke, focusing on maintaining that center of pressure with your hip for as long as you can during the stroking movement. As you get better at this drill, you should feel like you are able to strongly push your body forward against the position of your arm. Once you can, the next step is to build this drill into a workout that will allow you to focus on stabilizing your rotation as you swim. Maintaining a stable center of pressure isn't the only way to harness the natural power of your body's rotation. Nevertheless, it will stabilize your position in the water, allowing you to travel farther forward with every stroke. This will reduce your stroke count and help you to swim faster. If you'd like help with one of the drills in this series, or you'd like to have your stroke analyzed, please visit us at any Swim Labs location. We'd love to help you learn to swim fast, faster.